Uh, I see you have this big gadget over there, Steven. Could yes. you just show us a little bit? So this is my camera. Uh, it's an Icon D750 and I use a 90 millimeter macro lens. And there's a flash here. And this thing here is called a, a diffuser. The function of it is to diffuse light coming from the flash. Uh, because we all know that soft light is superior than hard, it's better than hard light. So the concept of this diffuser uh, is that there's a diffuser material here and there's a reflector here. So whenever the flash fires, it reflects light off the reflector and the light is forced through the diffuser, diffusing the light. And this diffuser works best for small subjects that are about this big. So they'll be around here in the camera setup. So a lot of our frogs are about that big. So this setup is really ideal for small to medium sized frogs. Occasionally I see larger frogs like the Malayan horn frog, which my t-shirt design is based on. The females can gather up to this big. Uh, there are also giant river frogs and giant river toads that can get really big as well. For larger subjects, this diffuser might not be the best solution. And uh, for those subjects I use a commercially available diffuser. This is a miniature version of a diffuser that you see in a photo studio. And uh, this makes it, you know, a little bit more handy. And so what I'll do is I'll take out this homemade diffuser. And then I'll put a trigger on. And this will communicate with the flash that's attached on the diffuser Ooh. through radio signals. Okay. And that's how I'll be able to photograph large frogs. Yes. Right. Thanks, Steven. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are now in for a treat. Later on this evening, Steven will bring us on a night walk. But before that, could you share with us some of your most unforgettable moments in your frog photography journey? Yeah, um, so one of the most exciting things uh, when going out photographing animals is um, finding lifers. Uh, lifers are the first of a particular species that you really, really want to see. So both birders and herpers, we have a list of animals that we really, really want to see. You know, they tend to be very colorful, very exotic animals or rare ones. Or in the case of snakes, it might, it might be venomous ones. Uh, and, and we rank them, in, of course, right? Oh, this is really beautiful. I really, really want to see this. So um, every time you go out to the field and being able to see it and crossing it off your lifer list, it's, it's always exciting. And um, last year, I had a frogging trip at Cameron Highlands and I was able to see two lifers, one after the other, just five meters apart. Uh, that was tremendously exciting for me. They, they were both really rare frogs. They are very, very small. I have pictures uh, of them that you can flash in front of this video. Uh, one is called Leptobranchella kachil. It's, it of course has the Malay name for small, and it is very small indeed, just about this big. Um, and the other is Calopharynx yongai. It's a very rare frog, and it's re restricted to the highlands only. So you won't see it in the lowlands, you can only see it in the highlands of Cameron Highlands, Genting, and I'm not sure if it's here in Fraser's Hill, but it's possible. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's one of the, my most exciting moments, just seeing lifers one after the other, yeah. Okay, um, I have seen a beautiful photograph of yours in an exhibition. I think, is that what we call the Malayan flying tree frog? Yes. Beautiful colour. Yes, yes, they are gorgeous. We have a group of frogs here called the flying tree frogs. They don't actually fly, they glide. So they have enlarged webbing. Uh, not for swimming, but for gliding. They can actually jump from tree to tree. They open up their webbing to catch air and they can control the direction of their fall. And they are absolutely gorgeous. When I was a lot younger, I used to think that the beautiful animals can only be found in the Amazons. But oh, we've got lots of fantastic frogs here in Malaysia. Um, 
so the Malayan flying tree frog is a um, submontane species. You typically find it in mid elevations between 800 meters to 1,500 meters. Um, and that particular one was photographed in Genting Highlands. Ooh. And it was uh, perching on the base of a palm frond. And it was in just the perfect pose. I didn't yeah. have to uh, move it at all. I yeah. just need to sneak in and grab a quick photograph of it. And if you look really closely, it's a gravid female. It has eggs in its stomach and the skin wow. is semi-translucent. Yes, the skin is semi-translucent. You can see through the skin to wow. the, and, and observe Wow, that eggs. must be such a thrill. I was very, right. very pleased with that shot. Stephen, thank you so much for sharing with us the beauty of these delicate animals. Now, You're is there welcome. a message that you would like to share with our audience here with regards to nature conservation or protection of these frogs? So, um, I would like to say that we, we have to pollute less. And to pollute less, we have to think beyond the three R's, beyond reuse and recycling. We have to go towards not consuming if possible, you know. Live frugal lives. If, if you don't need a particular newfangled object, don't buy it, you know. If you don't have things that can cause pollution to start with, then you're not gonna cause any pollution. Yeah, uh, live simply, live frugally, uh, appreciate the outdoors, and try not to pollute, you know. Yeah, if you, if you go camping, if you have uh, miscellaneous bits of plastic, just keep it with you, bring it back and throw it in a proper uh, rubbish bin so that it doesn't end up in our rivers. This is a giant river frog, except this particular one isn't very giant. Um, we are very, very likely to see more of these. And as we approach uh, Joreal Falls, we might be able to see even bigger ones. Yeah. So this is a David Bowie Huntsman. It's not a herpental fauna, not a reptile, not an amphibian, but it's an example of the animals that you encounter when you go on a night walk. Uh, occasionally, we we'll see owls and nocturnal mammals. So we have a tarantula here hiding in its burrow. Uh, what we can do is we can use a stick and uh, move. See? We can pretend like we are uh, an insect, a cricket, and they'll come out to investigate. So Steven, what is this species? This is the, uh, the poison rock frog. Uh, the scientific name is Odorona hosei. They are called poison rock frogs because uh, they are poisonous to other frogs. Um, early herpetologists, when they collected these, they put it in gunny sacks uh, filled with other frogs that they have collected. And then at the end of the night, when they opened the sacks, they have realized that the other frogs have died. So it has developed this poison as an anti-competition strategy against other frogs. Uh, it's not incredibly poisonous to humans. If you were to touch it, uh, your hands will be fine. You might feel some tingling. Uh, it might cause uh, some irritation, but it's not known to be fatally toxic. Uh, <laughs> Stephen, thank you so much. You're most welcome. Once again, a big thank you to our frogman, Stephen Wong, for sharing with us his time and knowledge on frogs and macro photography. Stay tuned for the next exciting episode on MNS Nature Grapher. Do remember to click and hit the bell on the subscribe button to get the latest updates from us. I hope you will also be a member of Malaysian Nature Society. 
membership application is available on our website. Bye!